Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to our CMCC webinar. My name is Jeremy Powell. I'm a consultant at the Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change in the Risk Assessment and Adaptation Strategies Division, located in the lovely Venice, Porto Marghera. Today, I will be the moderator of um, a talk entitled Strategies for Resilient Infrastructures, a Climate Risk Assessment Framework Framework for Airports by Carmela Di Vivo. Before introducing Carmela, I'd like to say a few words about CMCC. Um, CMCC, which is the Euro, is a cent, uh, the Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change, um, has the mission to investigate and model our climate system and its interactions with society to pro provide reliable, rigorous and timely scientific results to simulate sustainable growth, protect the environment and develop science driven adaptation and mitigation policies in a changing climate. It also has the mission to develop foresights and quantitative analysis of our future planet and society. We have offices located throughout Italy. Our headquarters is in Lecce. Um, I'm talking to you from the division in Venice and our speakers in the Caserta division in um, Southern Italy near Naples. Um, the network of our offices provides an opportunity for us to um, interact with public and private entities. Uh, we work together on multiple disciplinary studies concerning issues of interest to climate sciences. We have a number of members and institutional partners. Uh, we have the um, INGV, the University of Salento, CIRA, um, the University of Carfoscri here in Venice, we have uh, University of Sassari and the uh, University of Tusha, as well as the Polytechnic, the Polytechnic um, University of Milan and Resources for the Future, and lastly, the University of Bologna. We focus on interdisciplinary work, uh, research. Um, the organization um, is, is set up in a way where we have a number of divisions. I'm talking to you from the Risk and uh, Assessment and Adaptation Strategies Division, and Carmela is in the Regional Models and Geohydrological Impacts Divisions. We have a, uh, since 2008, we've had a supercomputer located in our headquarters in, in Lecce. Um, the, it has about just over 1,200 cores with uh, about uh, over 12,000 teraflops of uh, computational capacity and over nine uh, peta, uh, petabytes of uh, storage and, and taping. Um, this supercomputer is the only uh, supercomputer in Italy that specializes in climate change research. And at current, CMCC is building a new and uh, upgraded com computational facility that will go online soon. Uh, outreach is one of the uh, core focus areas of CMCC. We do that through scientific um, articles for in international journals, ed educational programs, events, communication, and dissemination activities. And those are available to the public at, at large. And this webinar is an example of that. Okay. Um, so let me now introduce our speaker. Um, Carmela De Vivo. Carmela is, a, is currently a PhD student in environmental uh, phenomena and risks at the University of Naples, Parten, uh, Partenope. Um, and her for her dissipation, dissertation, she's working on the methodology to qu quantify the climate risks on airport infrastructure in the Mediterranean, which is the topic of today's uh, webinar. Um, as part of the program that she's in uh, for a PhD, she works with, the, with CMCC's uh, REMI division, which is the Regional Models and Geohydrological Impacts Division. Prior to joining um, the PhD program at the University of Naples, Carmela graduated in the Environmental Science program in 2018 at the University of Salerno. That was with honors, and she performed research on a similar topic. Um, before turning the floor over to our speaker, I'd like to remind you um, that this webinar is being recorded. Okay, the recording will be available on both the CMCC event page as well as our CMCC YouTube channel. And to foster a fruitful discussion, strongly, strongly encourage all of you to either post your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we will post, the, post them to Carmela at the end of the webinar, or prefer, or possibly preferably uh, raise your hand and we'll open your microphone up so that you can pose your question or comment directly to Carmela. 
So Carmela, please tell us more about strategies for resilient infrastructure. The floor is now yours. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Jeremy, for the, to introducing me and the topic of my presentation. Um, I start to screen my, to share my screen. Okay. Uh, Jeremy, can you see my screen? Not yet, no. Okay. No, we can't still. Ah, no. Uh, sorry. Got it. I. Now, yes. No, okay. I start to. <clears throat> mm. uh, my minutes. Mm. Um, okay. Yes, we can yes, see it. Okay. All ready to go. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, in the, this is my presentation. Um, uh, I will show you the framework defined to quantify the climate risk for Mediterranean airport in order to make this infrastructure more resilient to climate change. Uh, the presentation will be structured as follows. In the first part, I will give you information about uh, how climate change threatens critical infrastructure. We pay attention on uh, the impact on climate change for European aviation. Uh, after that, I focused on the possible strategies uh, already implemented to cope the climate change by European aviation. Um, then I will you, uh, show the several steps uh, with which I defined the methodology to quantify the climate risk for the Mediterranean airports with a several step. Identification of climate hazard, identification of exposure and vulnerability, uh, the framework obtained by selection of indicators, and normalization of indicators and calculation of risk index. Um, after that, uh, I will report the, the, some preliminary results of the application of this, um, uh, of this, um, the application of this methodology uh, to specific case studies in the Italian context with a focus on extreme temperature and precipitation. So uh, extreme weather and climate change uh, pose in several challenges to the infrastructure. Uh, critical infrastructure uh, defined as the function or uh, transportation system whose um, uh, disruption in, um, or interruption could cause a serious impact on national security, governance, economy, and social well-being of a nation. Uh, they provide the fundamental function to sustain the society and the breakdown of them um, create uh, um, sever, um, sever damage to the um, uh, economic, uh, uh, economic society and, uh, and human death. Uh, in fact, the, um, the economic losses in Europe over the period 1918 uh, uh, to 2016 caused by uh, weather and um, climate events are estimated to have exceeded uh, 436 billion euros and were distributed in the uh, European states as reported in the feature in, uh, in the slide. If the scenarios remain unchanged, the damage suffered by the critical infrastructure in Europe um, increase, uh, could increase and fold by the end of the century, starting from uh, 13.4 billion euros to 13.7 billion um, euros. 
Airports as uh, global connectors are uh, crucial for the world economy and play an important role in the world transportation system. However, the aviation sector appear more uh, vulnerable to uh, severe weather conditions, and for this reason, it is particularly um, at risk for the potential consequence of the climate change. Uh, several scientific studies have shown that the key risk uh, that European aviation can expect from climate change are uh, high temperature, very cold temperature, change in wind patterns, increase uh, in uh, number of days with uh, extreme rains, and sea level rise and storm, uh, storm surge. Um, this impact uh, um, differ according to uh, geographic area, climate zone, and local circumstances. And this, uh, um, this climate hazard that can uh, uh, several impact on the um, several structure of the, the, the airports. For example, high temperature, decreasing lift and thermal damage to the surface of the runways and other structure, um, very cold temperature, decreasing lift and uh, created icing phenomena. The, the changing with patterns affect usability on runways and interruption of the services, uh, while um, extreme um, precipitation events and sea level rise um, that create inundation of uh, runways, taxi waves, and other structure of the air. Airports. Many European airports uh, have already developed uh, adaptation strategies to cope climate risk, particularly in Northern Europe, such as in Ireland, Norway, or UK. Uh, while in the Mediterranean area, only Spain and Turkey have conducted the vulnerability assessment for transportation infrastructure. Uh, in fact, uh, despite uh, the um, impact of climate change are well, in no, uh, well known and uh, um, the, basi the Mediterranean basin uh, is considered a climate hotspot, there isn't a clear methodology to assess climate risk for this area. Uh, for this reason, we um, define the specific risk assessment framework uh, to quantify the climate risk for airports in order to uh, support the stakeholder to implement the specific adaptation strategies. The risk assessment framework was built according to the methodology proposed in the fifth assessment report of the IPCC, where the risk is defined as a function of hazard exposure and vulnerability, uh, which is turned divided in sensitivity and adaptive capacity. In general, hazard is uh, um, defined as the potential occurrence of uh, natural and human um, physical events uh, that uh, may cause loss, loss of life, injury, on, uh, or, um, or uh, other health impacts, while in this specific context, hazard refers to the potential occurrence of climate events that could damage the airport and compromise its operation. Uh, exposure is the presence of people, uh, ecosystem, environmental function um, that, that could be adversely affected. And in this case, in the specific case of airports, exposure refers to the specific components of the airports that may be affected and damaged by uh, hazard events. Um, on the other hand, vulnerability is the predisposition of a system to be adversely affected, and more specifically, sensitivity is intended as the degree to which the system is positively or negatively affected by climate events, while adaptive capacity refers to the ability to adapt to climate change or to cope the, with the consequence. In this slide, um, you can see the most important key steps to the construction of the risk assessment framework. In the first step is um, the definition of the climate hazard that affect the Mediterranean area, heat death, extreme temperature events, extreme precipitation events, and sea level rise. Uh, the second step is the definition of exposure sample, uh, heat death, air side component, and that side component. Um, the last step is uh, the definition to vulnerability factors, here divided in sensitivity factors and adaptive capacity factors. 
for each uh, uh, risk component, we selected the specific indicators uh, um, defined as a proxy to describe the specific uh, climatic phenomena and uh, or characteristic of a, of a system in terms of exposure simple and vulnerability uh, factors. Uh, for its uh, hazard, we selected by literature study the specific indicators that describe the, the variability, um, the climate extreme events in terms of frequency and intensity. For example, uh, to describe the increase of um, extreme temperature events, we considered the um, absolute, absolute uh, indi threshold indicators, while to describe the intensity of extreme um, temperature events, uh, we consider the um, percentile indicators. Uh, concerning the um, extreme pre precipitation, we selected uh, to describe, in order to describe the um, uh, rainfall frequency, the um, indicators based on the percentile, and in order to describe the rainfall uh, uh, intensity, the indicators based on time stretcher period for daily precipitation. <clears throat> While, uh, as regards sea level rise, um, we considered the um, sea level rise and storm surge uh, indica indicators. The various components of uh, airports were considered as the exposure sample. Uh, in fact, from an operational point of view, the airport is generally defined, uh, defined, divided into uh, many areas of activities, um, land, side, um, land side component and air side component. The land side component include the structure that, uh, that used for the movement of uh, aircraft, such as runways, taxiways, tower and aprons, while air side component refer to the public access areas, such as offices, terminals, airport access systems, and parking areas. Um, the considered climate hazard determine direct and direct impact on the exposure symbol. Direct impact, uh, impact refers to the uh, damage of the airport element, um, while indirect impact not di uh, directly refers to the exposure symbol, but they may cause an indirect problem within interdependent resources because the various components of the airport are interconnected uh, each other. For example, if the runways, are, um, the runways are damaged by the higher temperature, um, the, the, um, there may be delays or cancellation of flights and, in the worst case, the closure of the airport. Uh, after identifying the climate hazard and the exposure sample, we identified the sensitivity indicators. These indicators are influenced by natural, physical, uh, socioeconomic, and morphological characteristics of the system and depend on the type of impact to be assessed. Physical indicators um, include uh, the soil ceiling, building and bend condition, age buildings, underground infrastructure, and flooded areas. Uh, while social indicators include air traffic, parking access, staff work outside the airport, and passengers. Um, um, socioeconomics and geological indicators include land cover for socioeconomics indicators and elevation ge uh, geomorphology, coastal slope, inland buffer, shoreline erosion, and depression for the um, geological indicators. These indicators um, are used for the um, calculation of the risk uh, due to sea level rise and uh, um, uh, derived from the coastal vulnerability index that is the most important uh, index to uh, the, that used to assess the coastal the, the erosion um, the coastal erosion <coughs> uh, 
the adaptive capacity indicators uh, reflect the characteristics of uh, airports component, which make more or less likely to respond the expected damages. Um, the, adaptive, the adaptation strategies implemented to cope with the climate change can be, or, um, uh, can be uh, of a physical, uh, social, institutional, technological, and economic type. Uh, the institutional um, uh, indicators uh, include the initiative for adaptation to climate change, uh, insurance policy for extreme events, while the physical uh, indicators include the green wall, green roof, the infiltration and permeable pavements, heat resistant coating, longer runways, vegetated area in the, in the, in the airport, evening uh, departure and efficient drainage systems while the social indicators uh, include the uh, risk awareness. Um, in this uh, table, you can see the adaptive capacity indicators and relative uh, descript description of indicators and uh, the, um, the, the references. Uh, starting from the identification of different indicators, the following framework, uh, frameworks were obtained. The first one is the framework related to extreme temperature. Uh, as mentioned in the um, previous slide, the selected climate indices are based uh, on the temperature threshold that may damage runways, uh, apron, taxiways, or parking areas, and they may, and, um, or that may cause an interruption, interruption of airport act activities. We selected um, uh, a specific threshold to describe the frequency of extreme temperature, and um, uh, we selected the percentile indicators um, to describe the intensity of extreme temperature. The exposure symbols are the same for the uh, all the framework. Uh, analyzed, uh, while the sensitivity and adaptive capacity indicators uh, are divided in physical factors. Uh, concerning sensitivity indicators uh, uh, include physical factors for, uh, for, for example, age buildings and buildings in bad condition and soil sealing. Uh, that uh, that um, um, are the, characteristic, the specific characteristics of the airports and social factors, uh, for example, air traffic, parking access, passenger staff work outside the uh, airport. Um, um, while uh, adaptive capacity indicators um, uh, include the initiative for adapting to climate change, um, that the presence of green wall, uh, green roof, heat resistant coating, longer runways, vegetated area, evening departure, and uh, in initiatives for energy uh, consumption. In the framework two, um, the climate indicators um, were chosen based on the precipitation threshold that determine high impact on airport uh, or airport components. Uh, extreme rainfall events could compromise, for example, the drainage capacity of the airport with an increase in flooding. Um, generally, the, the profile uh, of the runways are designed to uh, minimize the risk of the water accumulation. However, flood of runways, uh, uh, taxiways, and apron have become more frequent in uh, recent years because the current drainage system have of, uh, often failed to cope with uh, uh, heavy rainfall. Uh, there are several factors that um, leave an airport more vulnerable to uh, extreme rain rainfall. The, for example, uh, the presence of the ground infrastructure that considering the sensitivity, uh, the sensitivity indicators, um, the, physical, the physical factors for age and building in bank condition, the, the soil ceiling, and the information about the flooded areas in historic period and social factors, for example, air traffic, parking access, and uh, uh, passengers. Um, concerning the adaptive capacity indicators, indicators we um, 
including the, the initiative for adapting to climate change, the presence of, of vegetated area around the airports, the insurance policy extreme events, the risk awareness, and um, the presence of efficient drainage system and monitoring and uh, alarm systems. In the, um, the framework three related to the sea level rise, uh, we selected the two indicators that describe coastal flooding, the sea level rise and storm surge level. This uh, sea level rise is uh, defined as the potential increase of mean sea level that may cause permanent or occasional inundation of low-lying coastal areas, while uh, uh, storm surge level is defined as the temporary increase at particular locality in the height of the sea due to the uh, extreme meteorological condition. Um, the, um, concerning the um, sensitivity uh, indicators and adaptive capacity indicators, we selected um, uh, some inches that, uh, um, that you can find the coastal vulnerability index, uh, in particular geological and socioeconomic indicators uh, that used in the calculation of coastal vulnerability index that is one of the most commonly used uh, in, um, method to assess coastal vulnerability to sea level rise, in particular to the erosion and inundation. Uh, the, the sensitivity indicators included uh, the, um, including the um, flooding area, elevation geomorphology, coastal slope, hill and buffer, uh, shoreline erosion and accretion, and land cover, while the adaptive capacity indicators uh, include the initiative for adapting to climate change, um, risk awareness, efficient drainage system, monitoring and alert system, systems, runway elevation, and construction of barriers. Uh, once the indicators for, for each component of the risk uh, have been identified and calculated, the next step involves the um, calculation of climate hazard, of hazard index, exposure index, and vulnerability uh, index. Uh, these indices are calculated starting from the normalization of each indicator. Uh, in general, the metric indicators, for, for example, the extreme temperature and precipitation, are generally normalized by applying the min-max method. Uh, this approach uh, transform, uh, transforms all values to score in a range from 0 to 1, where the highest values correspond to the highest um, contribution to each factor and vice versa. The calculation of each uh, in, uh, index take, um, take place through the um, aggregation using linear aggregation method, while the vulnerability index implies a simple average between sensitivity and adaptive capacity indices. Uh, the final risk index is given by the multiplication of hazard exposure and vulnerability, um, vulnerability index. And in order to have the comparable classes of the risk, we used the quantile classification method to uh, obtain five qualitative classes, uh, best, very low, low, intermediate, high, and very high. Uh, in order to validate this methodology, uh, we applied the framework related to uh, extreme temperature and precipitation and specific airports of the Italian context, uh, in particular Malpensa, uh, Linate, Bergamo, Fiumicino, Ciampino, Napoli, Catania, Palermo and Cagliari. Um, the data set uh, used to calculate, to calculate the hazard index uh, are data set, data set where uh, in that data set um, where a mescan surface with the resolution five kilometers um, for the calculation of extreme temperature and precipitation um, in, in indicators for the observational period uh, 1981 to 2010, um, 2010 for the airports under analysis while for the future period we uh, use an ensemble of, um, of a record model uh, with a resolution about 12 kilometers uh, over Europe, uh, where, and, and, 
this uh, the ensemble um, ensemble model uh, were used to calculate the these, indica these uh, indicators in the future period period uh, use, um, uh, under IP, uh, several IPCC uh, scenarios, RCP uh, 2.6, RCP uh, 4.5, and RCP 8.5. While the exposure index was obtain, uh, obtained using the information contained uh, in the specific report named Atlante degli Aeroporti Italiani, Uh, while the information about vulnerability is taken from the website and official documents available for uh, each uh, single airport. Uh, in this slide, you can see uh, the preliminary results uh, about uh, the, um, extreme, the extreme, temper extreme temperature uh, for the observation period and the future, uh, future period. Um, For the observational period, um, the risk index appeared very high for the Cagliari and um, Cagliari, Catania and uh, Malpensa. And uh, Ciampino and Napoli are characterized by the intermediate le level of the risk. Uh, while uh, Bergamo, Ninate, Fiumicino and Palermo uh, belong to the lower classes. In the future, uh, in the future scenarios, um, Fiumicino and, uh, and Linate pass to the lower classes, uh, um, the observation period, into high class, uh, classes for the future period, uh, while Pensa remain in change. Um, in the other hand, uh, Napoli, Palermo, Catania and uh, Cipino uh, um, shown, in, in, shown in the lower classes of the risk. In the RCP uh, 4.5, uh, Malpensa, Fiumicino and Cagliari belong to the high and very high classes, while Linate and Ciampino are characterized by intermediate classes, um, and Palermo, Catania and Napoli uh, show a low risk index. Uh, in the worst case uh, scenario, uh, RCP 8.5, Malpensa, Fiumicino and Cagliari are characterized by high and very high risk. Uh, in the other hand, Bergamo and Linate show an intermediate risk, while Ciampino, Napoli, Palermo and Catania belong to the and very low class. Uh, concerning the risk due to extreme uh, uh, precipitation, in the observation period, uh, Fiumicino, Malpensa and Dinate are characterized by a uh, very high and high level of risk. Uh, Napoli and Palermo and Catania um, show intermediate uh, risk classes, while um, Cagliari, Ciampino and Bergamo belong to the low classes of the, of the risk. In the future period, uh, RCP, uh, in the scenario uh, RCP 2.6, uh, Malpensa, Bergamo and Fiumicino show high level of risk. Uh, Ciampino and Linate are characterized by intermediate level and Napoli, Palermo, Catania uh, and Cagliari belong to the low classes of risk. In the RCP uh, 4.5, Uh, Bergamo, Malpensa and uh, uh, Malpensa, Bergamo and Fiumicino are characterized by the high level of risk and Linate and Ciampino are intermediate classes of the risk. Uh, and Napoli, Cagliari, Palermo and Catania uh, belong to the lower classes. In conclusion, uh, in the worst case scenarios, Malpensa, Fiumicino and, Na and Napoli show the high level of the risk, while Palermo and Ciampino are characterized by intermediate risk level, and uh, Catania, Cagliari, Linate and Bergamo belong to the low classes of risk. To conclude, the um, proposed methodology is uh, uh, replicated in uh, other uh, geographical context affected by the same hazard. Um, the method proposed um, uh, here aims to support stakeholders in uh, conducting risk analysis in order to identify um, specific adaptation strategies. And in general, uh, the possible adaptation strategies to implement are uh, divided in, the, in uh, gray, green, and soft measure. 
the gray measure uh, refer to technology and the engineering solution to improve the uh, the adaptation of infrastructure and uh, other systems. Uh, soft action uh, include the, man, the, man, um, the legal or political measure that change human behavior and the governance. Uh, finally, uh, green measures are based on the ecosystem-based uh, based approach and uh, mm, uh, uh, they improve the resilience and adaptation uh, capacity of the, of the system. With regard, in the specific case, to the adaptation of airports, the soft measure refer to the enhancement of the, uh, the, um, of the health system, the promotion of, uh, of awareness um, for, uh, for the companies or, or uh, Addance of pol policies for extreme events, while the green measure include the construction to improve the, the drainage system or the construction of barrier to, to cope the, the flooding uh, and so on, while the green measure include the, um, the presence of green area or the green wall or green roof in the, in the, in the airport. The application, uh, the next step is, uh, is application of this method methodology um, for another case studies and uh, um, uh, focusing attention on other climate risk, for example, uh, the sea level rise. Uh, but it is important to underline that this, um, uh, this uh, analysis, uh, um, uh, in, uh, this analysis is uh, um, 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 uh, the quantify uh, the, the effect of the climate risk on infrastructure is a very complex task uh, due to limited uh, availability of data, uh, especially those relating to uh, the vulnerability. So it is important to encourage greater sharing of data concerning infrastructure, especially in terms of, uh, of vulnerability, uh, in order to improve the methodological aspects of the, of the risk analysis. In this slide, you can see the reference used in the, to, to define the methodology. Uh, the, methodolo the methodological paper published on the natural hazard is uh, reported in, uh, in bold, where you can find the additional information about the methodology. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Carmela, for your excellent presentation. I know um, I certainly learned a lot from it, and I'm sure our audience did as well. I'd like to remind the audience to uh, type a uh, question in the Q&A box or uh, simply raise your hand and we can, uh, you can ask your question directly or pose a comment. Um, so let's look what we have. First question there is, will you provide slides? I think um, uh, you can email Carmela directly for slides. And also we have, a, I want to also remind you that our, the presentation will be available on the YouTube channel, as well as our CMCC home uh, webpage. So you can also see the slides from there. Um, uh, we have a question from Federica. She says, um, have you thought of including risk estimates in your um, for clo airports close to the sea? And also what about water quality and air quality? I think she may oh. be thinking about the impacts of temperature on smog and uh, the ex exposure to the um, the workers there, uh, out there, working in outdoor conditions there. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Um, uh, no, in this moment we uh, we consider only the aspect uh, uh, regarding to the climate change, uh, the climate hazard. Uh, but we we are investigating these uh, these aspects that are very very interesting. Thank you. Okay, we have the next question um, from Marmelle, who um, uh, wanted to know how, to, how you harmonize the grids of the different data sets to calculate risk. And uh, for example, the hazards um, maybe on different uh, grids from your models and then the, the, from the airport. Okay. Um, yes, thank you for the question. Um, okay. Uh, mm, we use the, uh, the gridded the gridded data set of WERA for uh, calculating the hazard index uh, in the observational period, and we considered the, um, 
the near three points uh, of the, the gridded data set near, uh, near the airports in order to, uh, in order to consider the, the, um, the, the area uh, of the, the area of the airports. Um, so we, we, we considered the, 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 the not three, sorry, the nine grid point uh, near of the site of airports uh, in, to consider in the data of the model and uh, the, for the model's data and uh, the, of the, the reanalysis data. I don't okay. know if I answered this question. Okay, um, the next question is on the, uh, if you consider the quality of the, the infrastructure at the airport, say the quality of the building or the, the condition of the building, and um, how do you quantify those or how would you quantify them if you were to account for them, if you didn't? Okay. Um, okay, we, uh, we consider the, 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 Okay, the the the, quantif the quantifying this uh, in these studies is very uh, it is very difficult to quantify um, any aspect of the indicators, uh, especially for the vulnerability indicators. Uh, for example, the the, in, the buildings in bad condition or other indicators, because uh, these data um, are not available for uh, for each hazard. So uh, this. Uh, this is a very, a very important uh, issue for the analysis, uh, for the risk analysis, because the, in the, the data about the vulnerability is, uh, is a very complex, uh, is very difficult to find this, uh, it's very difficult to find this data about the, the vulnerability. And uh, other data such as the, the water uh, and, and so on. Okay, the next question is on um, some of the hazards. Uh, if you considered looking at, it looks like um, the question is focusing on wind hazards, extreme winds, hail storms, well, that's not wind, um, tornadoes or medicanes or medical uh, Mediterranean tropical cyclone like um, events. And I assume uh, that's referring to takeoff conditions and landing conditions. Yes. Uh, yes, it is an important question and important issue. Uh, mm, but we uh, decided to uh, consider only the climate hazard affected the Mediterranean airports uh, that uh, increase in the medium and long uh, time period. Um, for now, uh, we consider only this, uh, only this hazard, extreme temperature, precipitation, and sea level rise, but uh, we are investigating another aspect uh, related to uh, storms, uh, Medicaid, or the, or the other uh, Hazard aspect. Thank you. Another question about um, the wondering why the temperatures, the extreme temperatures, reduce or uh, go down in Cagliari, and um, it, she wanna, I think she wanted to know if you verified the results with some sort of past period data. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Mm, it is important to thank you for the question. Uh, it is important to underline that the results that the, the results uh, uh, that I uh, saw in the, the slide uh, are the results of the uh, risk index, not only the hazard. So the, um, the, the final results are influenced uh, uh, by the, with the aspect, for example, exposure and vulnerability. And in the case of Cagliari, uh, Cagliari are characterized by the uh, high hazard, but expo exposure and vulnerability, lower exposure and vulnerability factors. Uh, so it is the the the, the reason for 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 these uh, the for these results. Okay, the next question is on um, economics and damages. Um, have you considered um, damages um, in your assessment and um, looking at the costs of adaptation um, versus doing nothing? 
no, uh, we we don't consider this uh, uh, not consider this aspect, but uh, it is a very important uh, important uh, uh, relevant issue for the economic aspect that um, we will include in the next uh, in the next step because um, it is important to quantify and select and quantify the specific in the uh, economic uh, indicators we are investigating. Next question is on um, how airports you think, how do you think airports will change in the future because of climate change? Um, okay. Uh, the for the for the airports the 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 problem of the climate change for the airports is a uh, is a uh, is a very relevant because uh, as I mentioned in the in the in the slide the the damage to the structure uh, can uh, uh, can determine the, determine the the economic damage for the for the companies. So it is important to understand and quantify the climate risk in order to um, in in, or, in order to um, uh, um, have say uh, implemented adaptation strategies in order to cope the climate change and uh, dramatically affected for the infra this infrastructure the other uh, other structure okay and i i left out the second part of her question she's also saying that um, airports are a big driving uh, factor for climate change and she's also wondering how airports would adapt uh, to perhaps reduce emissions or something like that so Um, uh, yes, the, for example, the airports the, that I consider in these studies, uh, some airports have already ad um, adopted some adaptation strategies. Uh, for example, Malpensa and uh, uh, Fimicino are, um, <clears throat> uh, are implementing some uh, adaptation strategies. For example, uh, Green Wall for Malpensa and Fimicino, the resistant coating for the runways. Be, um, uh, that and the, these airports are um, are the 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 most the, the these airports are characterized by the high adaptive capacity uh, than uh, other other airports considered. In the Italian context, uh, uh, there aren't uh, there aren't um, there aren't uh, adaptation strategies uh, uh, implemented. Okay, we're running out of questions. Uh, please type your questions in the Q and A if you have any. I actually have a question about the just thinking about the conditions of the the, the workers um, at the airport. They're uh, often under often the sun is uh, very strong. The uh, the heat, of course, is uh, something you've considered, but I, I didn't see humidity considered in the analysis. And and as you I'm sure know, humidity is a very important factor in terms of heat stroke and human health. Um, and I'm wondering if that, if, if you hope to consider that in your analysis and, and how you would go about doing that. Um, you know, I'm thinking of the vulnerability and the exposure to the, the workers or the workers, um, you know, also even the income demographics of those work, the workers and the, the, um, uh, the race demographics and the vulnerability of that community and if humidity is considered humidity is considered a very important factor for heat waves and human health and heat stroke um, also considering that they're under the sun that uh, uh, increases their exposure i'm wondering if you're if that is included in your assessment and if, if others uh, other airports you mentioned in europe have considered that as well yeah Yes, in fact, uh, uh, with the focus uh, of the risk assessment is the Mediterranean area. The ideas, the ideas uh, are the, um, extending this study in other uh, airports in the Mediterranean area, for example, in Spain or the other country that are uh, this um, uh, in order in order to the, the um, analyzed uh, any uh, another aspect uh, and another climate uh, hazard.
Okay, and I, I noticed you know you used the the IPCC framework for the, your um, your uh, assessment. Uh, wondering you know the the uh, ISO standards if you've considered using those for for risk management and how that if you have how it would change your results. Uh, uh, yes, because uh, in the um, in the in the last risk assessment framework uh, emerged that the this uh, this hazard in particular for the sea level rise is uh, is increase uh, are increase in the in, at the end of the century and uh, in fact we we uh, we uh, we. Um, uh, we consider the the the, the, the other risk uh, such as the sea level rise uh, for, because the sea level rise is uh, uh, is very important aspect for the for the airport in the Mediterranean area uh, due to the sea, sea level and uh, and um, uh, um, not only in the Italian context but uh, uh, other in in other uh, in other country. For example, in Northern Europe, they've uh, already implemented the adaptation strategies for uh, to cope the, the sea level rise. For example, the airport in Norway, um, const um, the, uh, um, construction, the, the, the run waves above all uh, the seven, seven meters on sea level to, to cope the marine flooding and so on. Okay, thank you. Let's... It looks like there aren't any more questions. Um, if you, I guess, if you have further questions or you don't want to ask them in directly in the chat, um, feel free to email Carmela directly. And maybe if you'll join me in a virtual round of applause for a presentation or excellent presentation. Thank you, Carmela. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Jen. For enlightening us on the, this topic. And, and I personally look forward to seeing more of your work in the future as you advance in your career. And I'd like the audience just to bear with me one second, just for some uh, uh, another announcement. Um, I would just put this presentation back here. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, I'm guessing that the chat box is in the way, is that correct? Let's see. Um, so just as a reminder, the, the, uh, this presentation will be put on the YouTube channel, our YouTube channel at CMCC, and we also, also as well as our website. And don't forget to follow us on all, our, all these uh, social outlets there. And also would like to just um, uh, plug the next webinar. It's the effects of COVID-19, the COVID-19 lockdown on greenhouse gas emissions, which lessons to learn on the way towards decarbonization. And the speakers are Gian Andrea Marinari, Marinini Manarini. and uh, sorry, uh, Luis Sarimento, Sarimiento. Okay. And thank you again for joining our se seminar. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye.